So this is the demo to show how FireEye alerts can be received by Infoblock's DNS firewall and can be acted upon. The way this works is it's a very simple concept of um, what's called as response policy zone in DNS. And response policy zones are the domain names that are treated in a different way. So when you get a DNS request, the response of it can be a substitution domain so that you can direct the query to um, a wall garden page or the query can be dropped which means that the domain resolution does not happen and the user cannot reach the, the requested destination which is what the desired effect is for the malware, mal malware blocking. To do that what we do is we create a response policy zone specifically for FireEye integration. As you notice there is a specific type of response policy zone which is called FireEye Integrated Response Policy Zone. And then we walk through this wizard and follow up the steps. We give it a user-friendly name. This could be a particular FireEye appliance, say on the West Coast, or something specific that you want to, want to remember about that. We can, of course, add comments. And then what we get is an identifier or a server URL which we will later use for configuring the FireEye appliance so that it sends the log messages to this InfoBlox product. As you can see, there are different types of FireEye alert types. It could be a domain match, it could be an infection event, a callback event, and we can have different set of policies for this. So for example, you can say, if there is a domain match, and I know this is an APT event, I can have block. I can block the response without sending any response data. So the policy is called block no data. Or you can have other settings such as substitute domain. Substitute domain is a great way of redirecting the traffic to another location. It could be a wall garden, it could be a honeypot that you want to investigate further. There is also a concept of lifetime which is when an IT administrator is trying to do a resolution of this event, if he's fairly certain that this is an APT, they can block it for a longer duration. But if it is something where um, the resolution is not clear, you don't want to block it for, for longer duration. You want to block it perhaps for just a day or, or in some cases if it's, it's a malicious known botnet destination, you might want to block it forever. So these are the different settings that are available in the Infoblox DNS firewall product. And when the RPC is created, these policies can be set up ahead of time. So this is where I'm adding a substitute domain, which is my wall garden. And the next step in this process is to create the name servers, which are used to propagate the response policy zone. This uses our grid infrastructure where all the information that is received by the DNS server is propagated to the other DNS servers. And to do that, we use the grid primary member. You can select any of the members to be the recipient of this information. And this information will then be propagated to all the grid members and can be enforced at multiple points. After I select, I can add this as a name server. And what that means is now your grid is enabled. All the DNS servers will receive the FireEye information. The next step I do is I save and close. And a new zone is created. So as you see, FireEye West Coast is a new response policy zone that was created in this process. Once I'm done with this step of creating the RPZ zone on my on my DNS grid of InfoBlox, the next thing I do is I go to the FireEye product and I configure the FireEye product to send the alerts to InfoBlox. And to do that, I go to Notifications and I add the configuration of the InfoBlox grid server that we just created. This is where I create a new HTTP server on the FireEye side. 
such that the alerts and all the malware that's detected gets sent to us. Server URL is the information that I had captured when I created the response policy zone. This is the one that's used by FireEye to identify the device that it net needs to send the information to. The next thing I do is I log in with the username information which I, which I already created on the InfoBlock side. I make sure that this is SSL enabled. I choose a specific format which is JSON normal for the integration and then I save this information on FireEye side. Just to make sure that this information is saved, what I would do next is I would test fire a particular type of event. And what this does is it, it checks the connectivity between the FireEye and InfoBlocks appliance. This is all that's required to set up the integration between FireEye appliance and the InfoBlocks DNS server. Once this portion is done, all the alerts are sent to the InfoBlox product and they are acted upon. The next phase that we discussed is once the disruption of APTs happen, how do you understand, how do you remediate the clients and, and how do you take action on the clients that are, that are infected? That is done by the reporting server of InfoBlox. This is an example of DNS top RPZ hits and as you can see, these are all the different client IDs and the client IP addresses that we're trying to reach these infected domains. A lot of these domains are the ones that were sent by the FireEye appliance. And it tells, it tells us the number of hits, total number of clients that are infected, different types of actions that were taken based on this. And this is a very useful tool for the IT administrators to take a remediation action. So in a nutshell, this is how we, we, we do the detection of APT using fire appliance. Then we do the disruption of APT using the RPZ or the response policy zone. And finally, there is a remediation piece where using our reporting server, you can identify the infected clients and remediate those.